this lesson I'm going to show you guys how to apply the skin modifier. So here you see I have a character mesh ready to go. Um, so what I need is a, I'm going to import a biped structure to um, apply it to. So um, we do that by going over to um, systems, biped, um, and I'm just going to use uh, skeleton for this example. And I'm going to start here and I'm going to draw in a skeleton. It doesn't have to be perfect because uh, we're going to have to make some changes regardless. So there you see, um, and you also see it's a little difficult to see um, the structure underneath. So what we're going to do is I'm going to go under materials and I'm just going to create a new one. Um, I'm just going to make it uh, very transparent and I'm going to apply that to this character. So now you can see he's a little easier um, to see the skeleton underneath. So um, then I want to make sure that I don't mess this up so I'm going to um, select him and I'm going to go to free selection. Now you see when I do this it actually becomes solid again. So what I need to do is to oops, go back, unfreeze it, select the character and go to object properties and then click on show frozen in gray or rather uncheck it. So now when I freeze it, it'll maintain that transparency. So now what we're going to do is uh, make some changes to this rig, first of all. Um, I'm not going to spend time setting up the fingers because that's going to take a lot of time. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into figure mode and under structure, this is all under the motion panel. Um, once you have anything selected on the biped, this will pop up in the motions panel. Um, I'm going to reduce um, the number of fingers to zero, since I'm not going to be rigging fingers. You could do it later if you'd like. Um, and then for toes, I'm going to keep one, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to control select both of these and just make it a little wider. Oops. Um, for this, for setting up your rig, I want you all to switch over to local um, coordinates. Um, that's going to uh, make it easier to um, pose your individual bones. Usually it's left, um, selected to uh, either uh, view or uh, world, which kind of makes it more or less consistent across the board, which kind of makes it difficult when you're changing views often. Um, so what I'm going to do, oops, I forgot to reduce the number of toe links. I'm just going to, since he's wearing shoes, I'm just going to make one big toe per se. Oops. And it went back to parent. So I'll go to local. And let's keep it there for now. Alright. It's looking pretty good. Um, now for his spine, I don't think we need four. Go down to three just to make it a little easier. So now you see that his, uh, his shoulders aren't quite in the right place. Um, well, one thing I could do is I could uh, rotate these down. Um, which that's another thing to bring up is that obviously since this character is symmetrical we want to make sure we make adjustments as adjustments equally on each side. Um, so by clicking the symmetrical button right here under track selection um, you can actually make it so you're um, adjusting the same object on the opposite side. Uh, first one thing I want to do is I want to make this spine a little shorter so I'm going to control select all of these and I'm going to scale it down. Now I, this gives me a little bit more control. Um, I'll do that and then his spine is curved back a little bit. So now since I have all these selected I can adjust all their curves at once. So now get that right about in view. And now let's get those shoulders in view them maybe a little longer. Right. So here's where we kind of run to an issue with the symmetry one. So if I select this upper arm and click symmetry, 
Um, it's that one works fine. It's the lower ones that I usually have an issue with. See, it's not letting me bend it. Now, the reason that is is because of the way this character rig is set up. Um, there's two types of uh, hierarchies. There's forward kinematics and inverse kinematics. Forward kinematics is kind of what we discussed so far. So like, if you move your upper arm, obviously your lower arm and wrist and fingers go with it. Um, that's forward kinematics. That means it affects everything below it in the hierarchy. Uh, inverse kinematics kind of messes that up, but for a good reason. So let's say you need to be very specific with like hand or leg placement, obviously, or foot placement, like when you're doing a walk cycle. Um, inverse kinematics allows you to um, move something on the hierarchy and everything else to a certain point is adjusted accordingly. So obviously when I move the wrist, the forearm and upper arm adjust, um, but it stops at the shoulder. So the same thing goes for the foot, except it stops at the hip. Um, so that's what makes it difficult for the symmetry to work at all times. So uh, situations like that, so obviously the forearm uh, we got working fine. So let's rotate that back in place. It's a little bit longer. Um, symmetry might work. Yeah, it works uh, when I'm scaling, but it shouldn't work when I rotate it. Yeah, again, it's stuck. But I can... Um, rotate these individually if I need to. Um, so the best thing to do is before you go rotating the forearm, forearm and upper arm, um, get the wrist into place first and then kind of adjust your forearm and upper arm. And same thing for the leg, get the ankle in place first and then just enjoy uh, adjust the scaling of the upper arm and lower leg or upper leg and lower leg. Pardon me while I take a sip of coffee. So, I'm gonna fast forward a little bit. Um, so obviously, I'll only take a second, let's take the time to get the... head in place. So now um, I've prepared a rig that's kind of moving forward, so I'm just going to get rid of that one and then open or unhide the one that I created before. And I have no idea what that little thing is appearing on his head. Um, so from here, what I want to do is I want to unfreeze all so I can select the skin. And with the skin selected, I'm going to go to modify and I'm going to select. Uh, the skin modifier. And the first thing you need to do is you need to add the bones in your hierarchy. So I'm going to go under bones, click add, and I'm going to hit control A to select all and hit select. So now since that's loaded, um, I can select, select its forearm, we'll just try rotating it. So as you can see, his arm is now moving, or sorry, his, the character mesh's arm is moving when I bend the bipeds. Um, this may be a situation where things aren't lining up exactly. Um, if you do not line up your biped well, um, you'll see that some of your uh, character mesh is going to stretch. Um, and the way you fix that is you look at um, the envelopes for each bone that you created in this. So I'm going to select this, the skin again so I can go into the modifier. So with the modifier selected, um, let's select that forearm, which is right forearm. And then I'm going to go to edit envelopes. So here you can see that there's like this pill shape around his forearm, right? And what that is, is that basically is the area of influence for that um, modifier, or not, uh, for that specific bone. So 
let's say I wanted to fine tune it. So obviously I want this kind of centered in the middle of the arm. And you see how it kind of trails off. It goes from red to yellow to blue. That's kind of the area of influence. So it slowly fades off so it kind of gives a nice uh, fluid bend. Obviously if it was a very harsh bend it would kind of um, it wouldn't look realistic. Um, so this is where you can kind of fine tune those things. If you grab any of the vertices on the outlying edge you can make them uh, smaller um, if you need to make it uh, influence more. Uh, let's look at, let's see, his head for example. So his head doesn't quite hold everything so what I can do make this a little bit larger. Oops. You know what, I might not even need to do this. Let's just check the head first of all. Uh, let's go back to I, this little square that was puzzling me earlier is called head nub, and I'm not exactly sure how I put it there. So, um, grab the head, hit OK. Now when I rotate his head, everything, yeah, it's rotating fine. So, um, this isn't something I would mess too much with. Um, I'm going to try something really quick. So, um, one thing uh, that makes it easier to grab all these different uh, elements is one thing I forgot to do, which is freeze my selection again, so that way I won't accidentally select um, the mesh. Okay, so um, that is the basic um, basics of the skin modifier. Um, the physique modifier is a little different. It's a little bit more complex, but it offers um, you to do a little bit of distortion to kind of mimic uh, muscles, because obviously um, a realistic character is more than uh, skin and bone. Um, you need a layer um, of muscles underneath, which the physique modifier gives you a little bit more options in terms of that. But for setting up a basic character, uh, the skin modifier will do just fine.